Section 11.3 Matrix Multiplication The next block cipher we will look at is the Advanced Encryption Standard, AES. However, AES uses a mathematical operation called matrix multiplication, which has not yet been covered in this book. I promised in the introduction that I would present each mathematical concept that was needed, so in that spirit I will cover matrix multiplication here. This concept is needed in several later chapters. Unless you already know matrix multiplication well, it is best not to skip this. A matrix is simply a rectangular array of elements called scalars. A sequence of scalars forms a vector, so each row and each column of a matrix is a vector. These are called row vectors and column vectors, respectively. A matrix with m rows and n columns is called an m by n matrix. If m equals n, the matrix is called a square matrix. Here is an example of a matrix M with three rows and five columns, called a 3x5 matrix. It has 15 scalar elements, denoted here by the letters A through O. In this matrix, the three row vectors are square brackets A, B, C, D, E, square brackets F, G, H, I, J, and square brackets K, L, M, N, O and the five column vectors are square brackets AFK, square brackets BGL, square brackets CHM, square brackets DIN, and square brackets EJO. The rows of a matrix are numbered from top to bottom, and the columns are numbered from left to right. The element of M found on row I in column J is denoted MIJ, so M11 is A, M15 is E, and M31 is K. Types of scalars include numbers such as integers, integers modulo n, rational numbers, real numbers, complex numbers, and other types that are described later. Matrix multiplication works the same for every type of number. The product of two matrices X and Y, denoted XY, is formed by multiplying the rows of X by the columns of Y. Let's look at how this works in detail. The rows of a matrix are vectors, and the columns of a matrix are vectors. Two vectors that have the same length can be multiplied by what is called an inner product, also called a dot product, since vector multiplication is sometimes denoted by a dot. This operation takes the elements of one vector multiplies them pairwise by the corresponding elements of the second vector, and then takes the sum of those products. Suppose the first vector is square brackets A, B, C, D, and the second vector is square brackets E, F, G, H. They have the same length, four elements, so they can be multiplied. Their inner product is let X and Y be 4x4 four four matrices, and let P be their product, that is, P equals XY. Suppose square brackets A, B, C, D is row I of X, and square brackets E, F, G, H is column J of Y. Their product is denoted P, I, J. In other words, the element at row I, column J, is the product of row I of X and column J of Y. This can be written using subscripts as. A similar expression is used for other matrix sizes. Two matrices of sizes A times B and C times D can be multiplied whenever B equals C. Section 11.4 Matrix Multiplication No, this duplicate section title is not a mistake. There are many other objects in mathematics beside numbers that can be added and multiplied. Some examples are vectors, matrices, polynomials, quaternions, and, more generally, elements of a ring. You can even have vectors of matrices, matrices of polynomials, and so forth. There is more about rings in sections 15.6 to 15.8. Matrix multiplication can be based on these types of elements and their rules for multiplication and addition. 
The process is the same. You take the inner product of row i of x with row j of y to get the element at row i, column j, of the product matrix. Matrix multiplication is not commutative, meaning that you usually get a different result when you multiply a given square matrix x by a second square matrix a on the left or on the right. ax is not equal to xa. These are called left multiplication and right multiplication of x by a. For AES, we are concerned with multiplication and addition of polynomials. We all learned how to add and multiply polynomials in high school algebra. People who went on to careers in science and engineering probably still remember how it's done. Polynomials can also be divided. This division can leave a remainder, so there is the same notion of modulus for polynomials as there is for integers. Refer back to section 3.6 if you wish to review this. The scalar multiplication used in AES is not integer multiplication, but polynomial multiplication modulo another polynomial. This is probably as deep as we can go in this book, which is aimed at a general audience. Section 11.5 Advanced Encryption Standard AES the Advanced Encryption Standard is a newer block cipher that replaced DES in 2001. It was initially called Rheindahl after its inventors, Belgium cryptographers Vincent Reimann and Joan Diemen. AES originally came in five combinations of 128-bit or 256-bit blocks, with 128-bit, 192-bit or 256-bit keys. However, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, settled on the 128-bit block size for the standard. The number of rounds depends on the key size. 10 rounds for 128-bit keys, 12 rounds for 192-bit keys, and 14 rounds for 256-bit keys. Each round uses a round key consisting of 128 bits chosen from the full key according to a key schedule. Before the first round, the preliminary operation add round key is performed, which is simply exclusive oring the block with the round key. Each of the next 9, 11 or 13 rounds consists of four operations, sub bytes, shift rows, mix columns and add round key. The final round does not have the mix columns step. The 128-bit block is treated as a 4x4 matrix of bytes in what is called column major order, which simply means the bytes are written into the matrix down the columns rather than across the rows, like this. The first step in each round is sub bytes. This is a fixed simple substitution performed on each byte individually. The substitution was designed to be highly non-linear. The linearity property is discussed at length in section 12.3.1. The next step is shift rows. This is a transposition in which the rows of the matrix are cycled left by 0, 1, 2 and 3 positions respectively, like this. The third step in each round, mix columns, is the matrix multiplication. This is not ordinary integer matrix multiplication as described in section 11.3. The elements in the matrix are treated as coefficients of a polynomial. The scalar addition and multiplication operations are polynomial operations done modulo another polynomial. This has all been carefully designed so the operations can be performed rapidly in hardware. Mixed columns is omitted in the last round. The final step in each round is add round key. This is just a bitwise exclusive OR of the block with a part of the key determined by the key schedule. I find this exclusive OR at the end to be highly suspicious. I have been told by several electrical engineers that the waveforms produced by the exclusive OR of 00 and 11 
are distinct from the waveforms produced by the exclusive OR of 0, 1 and 1, 0, so an eavesdropper could discern what both bits were. This potentially reveals to the eavesdropper 128 bits of the key. When doing high-security cryptography, I avoid using exclusive OR whenever possible. When I am forced to use exclusive OR at the end of an encipherment, for example when I am implementing a standardized algorithm, I make sure to invert each bit of the ciphertext an even number of times. I keep two random bit strings, R1 and R2, the same size as the block, and their exclusive OR, R3, equals R1 exclusive OR R2. Then I exclusive OR the ciphertext first with R1, then with R2, and finally with R3. This gets the bit string back to its original value, hopefully with the telltale waveforms obliterated. Alternatively, you can use a substitution, rather than an exclusive OR, to invert all the bits of the block. You do this twice, so you use two substitution steps in place of the three exclusive ORs. If you are using AES, I highly recommend adding this extra final step.